good afternoon ma'am yes good afternoon uh, i was uh, just discussing that how the author has addressed the plight of children when they have a poor economic background as we are reading here in the lesson now she shares another incident another experience with sahibe alam if you please read from here that is um yes one winter okay one winter just a minute yes one winter morning i see sahib standing by the fenced gate of the neighborhood club watching two young men dressed in white playing tennis and he said i like the game he had been standing outside uh, he was standing outside uh, a place a stadium and he had been watching the people playing tennis and he said that he liked the game now if what the author means to say if he is a rag picker it does not mean that he has no right to have aspirations he also has the right to have dreams he also has a right to aspire so what he is born in a poor background right so he says i like the game that could be seen that could be visible the way he had been standing outside and watching the people playing tennis he hums he hums meaning he speaks in a low voice content to watch it standing behind the fence fencing do you know what is fencing fencing of the stadium yes ma'am ma that uh, just around the stadium you will find the wired fencing jo grill lagi hoti hai that is called fencing so he was standing behind the fence and he says i go inside when no one is around you see that he cannot curb he cannot check his this desire he knows he cannot play tennis yet why because tennis is an expensive game he knows he cannot go inside otherwise so he watches he loves watching and then he waits for everyone to leave and then only he enters the ground when he finds that nobody is around how he admits the gatekeeper lets me use the swing maybe somehow he pleases the gatekeeper and then the gatekeeper allows him in and then he enjoys on the swings in that stadium right sahib to is wearing tennis shoes that look strange over his discolored shirt and shorts strangely he was wearing tennis shoes tennis shoes which looks strange over his discolored shirt and shorts meaning discolored shirts and shorts meaning dirty dirty attire dirty clothes he was wearing dirty worn out clothes and why these tennis shoes look strange over his dress meaning that they were not matching with his dress how because stitch ten tennis shoes are very expensive and the dress he was wearing it was just dirty old dull and maybe worn out patched rags right and a boy in rags is wearing tennis shoes this appears to be something very odd so this is why the author says that the tennis shoes he was wearing it was not matching with his dress someone gave them gave them to me he says in the manner of an ex explanation perhaps sahib could read the feelings but perhaps sahib could read the expressions and mind of the author that's why he explained it very clear i didn't buy these shoes somebody gave these shoes to me he made it very clear that it is not possible for him to purchase those the fact that they are discarded shoes of some rich boy who perhaps refused to wear them because of a hole in one of them but that hole does not bother he was definitely wearing tennis shoes which are expensive but these tennis shoes were worn out as there could be seen a hole in the shoes definitely it must have been discarded by a rich boy
dream of wearing uh, these tennis shoes. So that is how you see when he goes to the garbage, what happens? He has dreams, he has aspirations, something he would get which would please him. And he hopes for those very dreams to be fulfilled, right? But the game he is watching, uh, sorry, for one who has walked barefoot, even shoes with a hole is a dream come true. But the game he is watching so intently is out of reach. The game he is watching so intently, meaning so carefully. That game is out of reach, meaning it is very difficult. It is almost impossible for him to play that game. Because as I told to you, that uh, tennis is an expensive game. Tennis racket, tennis uh, dress, tennis shoes, tennis balls, all these are very expensive. They are very expensive. So it is out of his reach, but he could manage to wear the shoes, however discarded by someone. So he is happy to wear those. This morning, Sahib is on his way to the milk booth. Another morning, when the author goes, what she finds, she finds Sahib going to a milk booth, of course, to get milk. In his hand is a steel canister. Steel canister is a steel container. I now walk in a tea stall down the road, he says, pointing in the distance. He uh, revealed the very fact to the author that now he is working in a tea stall. I am paid 800 rupees and all my meals. There he is getting the daily wage of eight hours. So there he is getting, sorry, 800 rupees and every day is meals. He is going to the milk booth to get some milk. Why? Because he, now he is working in a tea stall where he is getting 800 rupees and all his meals also. But he doesn't seem to be happy. Why? Does he like the job? I ask. His face, I see, has lost the carefree look. I see has lost, his face has lost a carefree look. He is going to the milk booth to get some milk. Why? Because he now he is working in a tea stall where he is getting 800 rupees and all his meals also. But he doesn't seem to be happy. Why? Does he like the job? I ask. His face, I see, has lost the carefree look. I see has lost, his face has lost the carefree look. Here is the answer whether he likes the job or not and why. He does not like this job of tea stall. Why? Because his face has lost the carefree look. Carefree look meaning from his face it appears that he is not getting freedom in this job. What does it mean? It means that he preferred to be a rag picker to a boy working in a tea stall. Why? Because in the rag picking business, he had his own fate, he had full freedom. Whenever he wanted to go, he could go. The day he doesn't want to go, he will not go. Wherever he goes, wherever he wants to go to uh, for the rag picking, he would go. But here in the tea stall, he is bound to do his duties. And who binds him? Of course, the owner of the tea stall. He has to be answerable to him. So he cannot enjoy freedom. That's why he doesn't like this job. The steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag he would carry so lightly on his shoulder. The steel canister that he was carrying, he found it heavier, must be heavier also because it was metallic. And the rags bag, that the garbage bag that he was carrying, that was plastic, must be lighter in weight. But what kind of weight he was actually feeling, try to understand when the author says that steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag, meaning 
he does not like this job of tea stall that's why carrying that steel canister seems to be heavy for him he felt this is heavier meaning he did not like that job he did not find it interesting and attractive the bag was his the steel canister is not his that was the tea stall owner's canister but the bag was his bag he was the owner it belonged to him the canister belongs to the man who owns the tea shop saib is no longer his own master so this is the reason he does not have the freedom however economically poor the boy but you see that the poor people also want freedom who does not love freedom everyone wants to be the master of one's own fate so does sahib he got a job he was getting a fixed amount of money why whereas rag picking was not giving him fixed amount of money rag picking was not giving him uh, rag picking was not assuring him food this had ensured him food yet he does not like why because there is the loss of freedom and he wants to go back and start rag picking whereas now you hear fun thing more we uh, get to know shitej that why he has he has to leave rag picking and start working in the tea stall parents might have forced him or his poverty might have forced him so what does it mean again the poor child when economically poor a child does not have his own wishes his own dreams he is just forced to do one or the other thing is that clear yes, yes is that clear uh, yes, you see that it reminds me you know it reminds me of the fact when you just go to a restaurant you just go to a dhaba you will find small children cleaning the floor cleaning the table cleaning the utensils isn't it even yes, when you go to the petrol pump have you ever noticed when you go to the petrol pump there you will find a small boy uh, filling the air into the tires of the vehicles have you noticed usually these boys are small boys sometimes the people give them tip sometimes they don't give and once i asked the boy i said beta yahan par aap subah 8 baje se lekar raat ke 10 baje tak ye tire mein hawa bharte ho aapko kya milta hai then he told me he is hardly getting 80 to 100 rupees and then sometimes the people give him tip koi 1 rupya deta hai koi 2 koi 5 deta hai bahut se log nahi bhi dete but the poor boy keeps standing the whole day filling air into the tires right i want to drive a car now this is the second part of the story this is the story of another boy just like saib e alam he also has his dreams he also has his aspirations saib e alam has a dream to play tennis to wear tennis shoes he has a dream to go to school and study and this boy whose story we are going to read the story revolves around these two boys the other one is mukesh who also has his dreams who also has his aspirations what is that i want to drive a car this reflects his aspiration mukesh is a poor boy who is working in a glass factory in firozabad making bangles but he aspires to become a driver he wants to drive a car but the poor child for him it is very difficult to make his dream come true why because there are many hurdles many challenges many difficulties in his life so it's not only the difficult life life of a rag picker there is another child also whose economic condition is so poor and that's why his dreams remain 
unfulfilled, right? Now here it is, yes. Mukesh insists on being his own master. I will be a motor mechanic, he announces. When the author talks to him, he insists, he insists, he emphasizes on this very fact. He points out that no, he wants to be a motor mechanic. He has a very strong urge to become a motor mechanic, right? This is what he announces when he says, I will be a motor mechanic. It means that he has a strong urge, a strong desire to become a motor mechanic and then to uh, repair a car and to drive a car. Do you know anything about cars? I ask. I will learn to drive a car, he answers, looking straight into my eyes. He looks at the author and he says, I will learn to drive a car. Why he repeats this? Why? Because he has a strong desire. His dream looms like a mirage amidst the dust of trees that fill his town, Firozabad, famous for its bangles. Try to understand this is a simile. His dream looms like a mirage. Mirage meaning a wish, a dream that cannot be fulfilled. Right? So his dream to learn to drive a car, that is like a mirage. That is like that very wish which cannot be fulfilled. What does it mean? He has a dream to learn to drive a car, but he cannot make his dream true. Why he cannot give this shape to his dream? Because of Firozabad, the town where he lives, which is known for making bangles, the town which is full of the dust, the dust of the glass. Now, why there is the dust in the streets of Firozabad? You will read later also. You know that in Firozabad, because it is known for making bangles, in every nook and corner, there are glass factories. In these glass factories, the glass is broken and powdered into the dust. And then it is used to make bangles. And then there is a long process. Just imagine the glass, the particle, the dust of the glass in the atmosphere, how hazardous, how harmful it is for the people, in particular for the young children like Mukesh. So the town which is always engulfed in the dust of the glass, in the glass factory, how can the young children think of learning something else, something beyond making bangles? Because for ages, the people in those factories, they are making bangles. It is the center of India's glass blowing industry, where families have spent generations working in our furnaces, furnaces, factory, welding glass, making bangles for all the women in the land, it seems. It is a main center of making bangles where families have spent generations, generations after generations, meaning their parents and grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents, their ancestors, they had also been making bangles. So that very profession, that very occupation has been passed on from generation to generations. And perhaps after Mukesh, the new generation in his family, they would also do the same, right? All these family members, they had been working in the glass factory, welding glass, Welding, do you know what is welding? Yes, ma'am. Right? You must have seen yes. it in the iron factory. Yes, yes ma'am. And making, making bangles. Mukesh's family is among them. 
None of them know that it is illegal for children like him to work in the glass furnaces with high temperatures in dingy cells without air and light. All the members of Mukesh family, they are engaged in making bangles. They are working in the glass factory and they do not know that the way they are working, it is illegal. They do not know that the children are involved in this work and it is illegal. The children are constitutionally, the children are not permitted to work in these factories. Why? Because of the conditions, the poor, impoverished conditions of these glass factories. Now, what are the conditions there? High temperature. Because of the furnaces, there is so much heat inside. Dingy cells. There are dark and dingy cells, meaning they are, they are dark, small rooms where there is no air and light. There is no ventilation. There is no ventilation. The glass is powdered into the dust and the young children inhale that. Then they walk in front of the furnaces in the high temperature that affects their eyes. They make bangles, they make designs on the bangles where they have to concentrate for focus for long. It affects their eyes. So there are a lot many health hazards which are involved. But these people, they are uneducated. They are not aware of it that this is illegal. That the law, if enforced, could get him and all those 20,000 children out of the hot furnaces where they slog their daylight hours. The parents and the elders in Mukesh's family, they do not know that the law does not permit the children to work in these factories. And if that law is enforced, is implemented in the right spirit, then not only Mukesh, but more than 20,000 children in Pirozabad who are engaged in making bangles, they all would be rescued from these hot factories. Hot factories where they slog their daylight hours, where they slog, meaning they struggle. They struggle throughout the daytime. You know, these young children, they keep on working during the daytime. They keep on working in the dark rooms. They don't see the sunlight. Why? Because as long as it is sunny in the day, as long as it is the daytime, these children are busy in making bangles. So they hardly see the sunlight, often losing the brightness of their eyes. So it affects their eyes. They lose their vision. Mukesh eyes deem as he volunteers to take me home, which he proudly says is being rebuilt. Author must have told him to take him, to take her to his home. And when he learns about it, his eyes beam. He is very excited. He is very happy. He is very happy to take the author along with him to his home, which he says has just been renovated. It has just been rebuilt. We walk down. Now the author is going to highlight the condition, the conditions in which they live, the surroundings of the place where Mukesh and his family lives. We walk down stinking lanes, choked with garbage, past homes, that remain hovels with crumbling walls, wobbly doors, no windows, crowded with families, humans and animals coexisting in a primeval state. The author has compared these very conditions with that of the conditions of living in the criminal, primeval stage, meaning in, in the prehistoric period. The author says when they were walking down to Mukesh's house, they had to cross stinking lanes, stinking smelling. The lanes, the streets, they had been smelling badly. Why? Because they were all choked with garbage. 
and the homes they had passed through they had crossed they were all like slums they were slums actually with crumbling walls with crumbling walls weak walls that could fall any time and wobbly doors wobbly doors unsteady unsteady doors shaky doors yani ki wo bhi itne majboot nahi the ki haath lagaya to wo kabhi bhi gir jayegi and there were no windows so it was not only that in factories there was no ventilation even in the houses there was no ventilation just imagine this was a newly built rebuilt house and there were no windows so where is ventilation and then the house was crowded crowded with the families of humans it must be a big family so many people were living together in the houses animals were also living there animals and humans all living together under the same roof so that reminds the author of a prehistoric period prehistoric period mein hota tha na jab nomads ek jagah se dusri jagah jaate the apne animals ko bhi saath le jaate the and then they all used to live together he stops at the door of one such house bangs a wobbly iron door with his foot okay he stops at the door of course his own door right and he bangs that door and he pushes it open we enter a half built shack they enter a half built shack shack meaning a hut a hutment in one part of it touch it with the dead grass is a firewood stove over which sits a large vessel of sizzling spinach leaves they had entered a shack a hutment which was not completely built and the roof of that house was covered with dead grass right and then on the firewood stove firewood stove is what jisko hum hindi mein chula kehte hain right chula par spinach leaves were being cooked spinach palak palak was being cooked on the ground in large aluminum platters plates are more chopped vegetables it is very much clear that the food was being cooked in the house by one woman who is that woman a frail young woman is cooking with the evening meal for the whole family a frail weak a young woman who was very weak she was cooking the evening meal for the whole family through eyes filled with smoke she smiles her eyes were filled with smoke why because she was burning the fuel on the stove firewood stove tha na chula jala rahi thi jiski wajah se dhuaan se her eyes were affected yet she was smiling she is the wife of mukesh's elder brother not much older in years she has begun to command respect as the bahu the daughter in law of the house already in charge of three men her husband mukesh and their father it was very obvious that she was the daughter in law of the house being a daughter in law she was given that respect right she had been taking care of all the men her husband mukesh and their father when the older man enters she gently withdraws behind the broken wall and brings her veil closer to her face now veil meaning actually parda but it's not uh, it's not parda actually this is what you can say that the corner part of the sari sari ka jo palla hai usse she covers her face when an older man maybe her father in law when he enters then she covers her face uh yes as custom demands daughters in law must veil their faces before male elders so this is the custom this is the tradition in many houses that in front of elders the daughters in law they cover their face in this case the elder is an impoverished bangal maker who is the elderly man must be the father in law must be mukesh's grandfather right he is an impoverished poor economically poor bangal maker 
despite long years of hard work, first as a tailor, then a bangle maker, he has failed to renovate a house, send his two sons to school. He had worked hard throughout his life. First, he was working as a tailor, and then he started making bangles, and now for years he was making bangles. But throughout his life, he has worked very hard, but he has failed to renovate a house, meaning he could not repair his house, nor could he send his children to school. All he has managed to do is to teach them what he knows, the art of making bangles. He could not help his children. He could simply teach them the same occupation that is making bangles. He himself had been making bangles and earning his means and surviving. This is what he has passed on this profession to his children. He taught them how to make bangles. And today they are also making bangles, right? It is his karam, his destiny, says Mukesh's grandmother, who has watched her own husband go blind with the dust from polishing the glass of bangles. Mukesh's grandmother is there. She defends her husband. She defends her husband. How she says? She says, it is his karma, his destiny, meaning why he is making bangles. According to the grandmother, he is into this profession of making bangles. Perhaps he has been destined by God to get engaged in this profession only. Right? What does it mean? Hindi mein hum kehte hai na, ye iske karam hai. Yani ki, Bhagwan ne iska bhaagya isi mein likha hai, ki isko bangles hi banana hai. I hope you are getting it, what I am trying to say. Yes, ma'am. Right? So this is what she meant to explain. That he was destined to make bangles. Even though what she finds, her husband, he has gone blind. Grandfather is blind. How did he turn blind? How did he lose his vision with the dust from polishing the glass of bangles? When bangles ban jati hai, in bangles ko pehle phir dust kiya jata hai glass powder mein aur phir usko polish kiya jata hai. Polish ke time par bhi iska jo dust hai wo urta hai. Aur wo seedha eyes mein jata hai. So you just imagine how health hazardous it is. Right. So the father, grandfather, he has become blind because of polishing the glass of bangles. He got blinded by the dust of the glass. Can a good God human lineage ever be broken? She implies, she explains. Can a God given lineage ever be broken? God given lineage, lineage meaning a traditional profession. A traditional occupation. What she means to say, just as for example, Shitesh, Kisan ka beta Kisan hi banega. This is a lineage. It is not written anywhere, but this is what some people believe. Doctor hai tuska beta doctor hi banega. Kisan hai tuski sari family Kisan ki yogi. Ek engineer hai tuski family mein sab engineer hoonge. Aisa nahi hota hai. But this is what that old woman she thought. She said, this is a God-given lineage. God has given them this profession of baking, sorry, making bangles. So how can they break this chain? Families after families, generations after generations of this family, they are making bangles and they are doing it. They cannot break this chain. This is what the thing. So now you can easily make out in such circumstances, how can the children like Mukesh make their dreams come true? At least Mukesh has the courage and confidence to express his dream, to share his dream, to share his desire, right? Born in the caste of bangle makers, they have seen nothing 
but bangles in the house in the yard in every other house every other yard every street in pirozabad now the all all of these people they are living in pirozabad in a particular place right and all these family they believe that they belong to that particular caste or community ye inki caste hai ye inki community hai bangal making ki so ye sab log jo hai wo bangals hi banayenge meaning they would not allow their children to go outside this circle and do anything else other than making bangles and in fact when you go to ferozabad you just go to these lanes you will find bangles and bangles everywhere in the house in the backyard in every house in every street everywhere you will find bangles spirals of bangles sunny gold paddy green royal blue pink purple every color born out of the seven colors of the rainbow live in the mounds in unkempt yards are piled on four wheeled hand carts pushed by young men along the narrow lanes of the shanty town multi colored all varieties of the colors of the bangles are available that can be seen lying in mounds lying in mounds meaning lying in piles heaps heaps or piles hote hain dher lage hue hote hain in unkempt yard in dirty yards they are piled and then all these are loaded on the four wheeled hand hand carts bullock carts right or the hand carts and then they are taken by the young men along the town along the cities to sell them and in dark apartments next to lines of flames of flickering oil lamps sit boys and girls with their fathers and mothers welding pieces of colored glass into circles of bangles in dark apartments when the author says in dark apartments it does not mean at night no it is the day time only but inside the apartments because there is no light no window so it's all dark these young children they keep sitting next to their parents and in the flickering light of the lamp in the flickering light of the lamp they help their parents in welding the pieces of colored glass and then make bangles their eyes are more adjusted to the world to the dark than to the light outside if i ever get the time i'll show you otherwise you should see youtube par ek video dekhna ugly condition of uh, the children right just a minute shall we have it tomorrow so that we complete it yes ma'am all right okay ma'am okay good bye thank you yes welcome